There are some people who don't study parametric. They just roughly know a bit about parametric and then they try to use a lot of head knowledge but very little decision making. So they will use the, they will do this. Okay, parametric to Cartesian, right? So maybe I can just try something that is like this, uh, secant. So secant t, this is going to be x minus h divided by 12, which means that cosine, sorry, cosine t is going to be equal to 12 over x minus h. That means t must be cosine inverse or 12 over h minus x minus h, which means that the Cartesian equation, it is going to be k plus 3 of tangent of cosine inverse 12 over x minus h. Okay, that's what some people will do. And I told you before, what is the problem? And I think this question, I mean, and I think through this question, we can exactly see what is the problem when some people do something that is like this. Can you see what is the problem? I, I, is this wrong? Not necessarily wrong, you know, that's the, that's the thing. That's why I was telling you that when some people do this, right, they just apply head knowledge. They don't plan. This will make us strong. This will make H2 math particularly meaningful. Or else, right, you are doing H2 math, but your mentality is stuck with secondary school, then H2 math will become very, very difficult to overcome. You, you know what is the problem? The problem is not getting the Cartesian. I mean, anyway, for this question, you are going to get it wrong if you have to give this version. The problem is, if you are subjecting yourself to something that is like this, and then what if the question requires you to draw the graph? Then you will never know that the graph that you are going to be drawing is actually a hyperbola. And if you don't know that it is a hyperbola, just by planting this into your GC, how would you even know that there is this asymptote that exists, there is these features of hyperbola that exist? It's not like you look at the equation, you can understand the features, you know. Hyperbola is learned by memorizing all the features, not because you understood that the equation become the hyperbola. That is why this is too short-sighted. Whenever we see a parametric equation that is like this, the best is to know that although I can do something that is like this, but what if this become one of the conics? This is very, very common. When the parametric equation involves trigonometry, many times the Cartesian equation is one that is of, a, of either of the four conics that you have learned. That is why in, pre in preparation for me to be encountering a conics, I'm going to make sure that I use trigonometric identity instead. It is not the general way to, to form the Cartesian equation from the parametric. It is a way that I know if I were to do that, there will be a higher chance for me to get the subsequent parts correct when I'm solving problem. So I'm going to try to, <clears throat> I'm not going to do this. I'm going to try to re-express this as in terms of secant. So this will be this divided by 12. I will re-express this in terms of tangent. So I will have this divided by 3. And I'll use trigonometric identity. I plan for this. I plan for this because the question was planned so that you can use the trigonometric identity. And I'm going to use the trigonometric identity for 1 plus tangent square t is equal to secant square t. So I have a 1 plus tangent square which is y minus k over 3 square is going to be equal to secant square this over 12 square. So if I were to change this to what the, according to what the question want me to show, then it will be this divided by 12 square minus away this divided by 3 square. This is equal to 1.